With global temperatures rising, the threat of a climate crisis has never been closer. Technologies like solar and other renewables form part of a solution, but more is required if we are to face this problem effectively. Approximately 45% of man-made carbon emissions aren't absorbed by the ocean or plants. Instead, they accumulate in our atmosphere, reflecting heat and radiation back towards the Earth, which increases global temperatures. Negative emission technologies are a wide and varied group of methods available for removing CO2 from the air. The most common form of this technology focuses on capturing the CO2 produced by large fossil fuels or natural gas plants, known as post-combustion carbon capture. Fumes from power plants are passed through a solvent, which dissolves the carbon dioxide. This solution of CO2 and solvent is then blasted with hot water vapour, which separates the CO2 so it can be stored instead of being pumped into the atmosphere. New technologies have also emerged that take CO2 directly from the air, known as direct air capture. One such facility is Climeworks in Switzerland, which pulls CO2 from the air to be repurposed as fertilizer for greenhouses. The UN has estimated that similar tech could pull between 1.5 and 6.3 gigatons of CO2 equivalents out of the atmosphere by the year 2050. However, they are extremely energy intensive to operate on a large scale. Fossil fuels still make up almost 80% of all of the energy produced on Earth, but there could be cleaner, natural alternatives. When hydrogen is burnt, it produces heat, which can be captured to generate electricity. On top of that, it combines with oxygen to produce hydrogen dioxide, water. It sounds too good to be true. Unfortunately, there are some drawbacks. Hydrogen rarely forms naturally on Earth, and producing it is expensive. This enormous cost could limit its widespread use. Our electrical grid system is old and antiquated, a vast network of wires and substations that normally originates from one large source. Importantly, our current system is a one-way grid, supplying power to houses but not receiving any feedback. A smart grid is a two-way system. It allows for the flow of electricity and data between producers and consumers. Sensors placed throughout the grid, along within people's houses and devices, will allow for energy producers to direct the flow of energy to where it's needed most, creating a smoother, more effective electrical grid that could hypothetically lower greenhouse gas emissions. This decentralized model allows for electricity to come from multiple, smaller sources, combining wind farms, solar panels and other renewables with traditional fossil fuels to lower the grid's overall carbon footprint and allow for a smoother transition into 100% renewable energy. Renewable energy produces fewer greenhouse gas emissions than traditional fuel, but the downside is that they can only be run under the right conditions. If we are ever going to switch entirely to renewables, we need to be able to capture the energy created at times of high production and then release it back into the grid when it's needed using batteries. The most energy dense batteries on the market are lithium ion, which can hold about 100 kilowatts for each kilogram. This simply isn't enough to account for the world's energy needs. The International Energy Agency has suggested that over 50 times our current global battery capacity is needed if we're to meet our current green energy targets. But that target might be easier to reach with the next generation of batteries. Lithium sulfur batteries would not only be cheaper to produce, but could also potentially reach an energy density of 500 kilowatts per kilogram. However, creating these batteries at a large scale could still be many years off. Road transport still makes up around 12% of our global carbon emissions. The first step in tackling this issue is moving to electric vehicles. On average, electric cars are far more energy efficient than their gasoline-powered counterparts. Driverless cars could also help reduce the climate impact of how we travel. These autonomous vehicles are able to navigate the roads more effectively, communicating with both the environment and each other. This means that they will be able to choose the most energy effective route and pack together into convoys to get people to their destinations more quickly and sustainably. No one of these solutions will stem the tide of climate change on its own. What's required is a multifaceted approach, combining smart planning and cutting edge technology, but also larger scale changes in policy, industry and culture. But what is clear is that these changes cannot come soon enough if we are to avert a climate disaster.